false apostles of austerity believe that imposing suffering on working people and the most vulnerable among us is how you show leadership in tough times. They are cowards, not leaders. Republicans have blocked aid which would spare 300,000 school teachers pink slips. They have refused to vote for funds so that a million unemployed workers could keep their unemployment insurance and COBRA health coverage. Obama and most Democrats, not those heartless blue dogs, have tried to hang this cruel behavior around the GOP's necks, as they should. Mass unemployment is a human and national calamity. It destroys families, crushes hopes. The longer it lasts, the more it cripples economic recovery and undermines democracy. Yet what was also needed in these last months was a strong and consistent argument from the White House, a message that a bold jobs agenda, not deficit and spending cuts, is the priority. The political staff in the White House argues that the public cares more about deficit reduction than about jobs. These advisors are fools. Yes, you can get poll respondents to say the deficit is a serious concern, but it's a far less salient one than worries about losing your job, your pension, or the value of your home. If Obama can persuade Americans that he is on their side on these immediate pocketbook issues, the abstract worry of the deficit evaporates. While the White House has puttered, the AFL-CIO has detailed a $400 billion plan that would put people back to work. It would have a negligible effect on the deficit, which primarily reflects soaring health care costs. The AFL and other progressive groups have also proposed a financial speculation tax and a tax on banks that kicks in a couple years from now. That, at least, would send the bill for the crisis to those who caused it. We can no longer afford to take half steps. It is bad economics and suicidal politics not to aggressively address the job crisis now. Voters won't believe the economy is on the mend until more people are back at work. The outcome of the November elections will hinge on that. Why not bring back the Congress back into session and filibuster obstructionist, stingy Republicans into submission? A nation that ignores the calamity of joblessness is a nation at risk. I'm Katrina Vanden Heuvel from The Nation for Grit TV.